Hello, everyone. Craig Deleuze here on behalf of the Firearms Policy Coalition, and I am at the Gun Rights Policy Conference 2022 in Dallas, Texas, coming at you live. Uh, as I said before, this is an event where the grassroots activists, uh, the people who are on the ground fighting for our fundamental right to keep and bear arms, uh, get together and talk gun policy. We talk litigation uh, as well as legislation and just, you know, what, what's going on, where you're at. It's a great networking opportunity and a chance to hear from some of the greats uh, in uh, in our industry. And with us, we have one of those individuals, so from the, like say from the Hall of Fame of gun rights, uh, Dr. John Dean of Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership. Dr. Dean, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's always good to uh, get together and spend some time with you and all the other 2A people. I mean, this is wonderful stuff. It's, it's energizing. Well, and especially because it's been, you know, it's been three years, three yeah. years since we've done it. So, it's hard because when you're in places like California, you you feel like you know you almost feel like you're alone at times in the gun rights movement. So you're it's behind nice to enemy be, lines. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, behind. I used to like I like to say behind the Iron Curtain, otherwise known as the Sierras. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so hey, do me a favor. Uh, let us let the folks know a little bit about. Who are, what is Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership? All right, so we're part of the Second Amendment Foundation. We're a Second Amendment Foundation organization. It was founded in 1994, I believe, by Dr. Timothy Wheeler, who's an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. And he realized that there was a lot of bias against the Second Amendment and firearms in the medical literature. So he started this organization, and he was one of the people that testified in front of the Congressional Committee to defund the CDC because of their advocacy bias research. And so we got the Dickey Amendment out of that, and uh, that's still in effect even now. Um, we also uh, analyzed some of the medical literature, and we, you know, tear it up, and, and you know, we, we expose the bias. Uh, and then we also do things like uh, we participate uh, in uh, some of the court cases. We, we uh, submit information for amicus briefs and, and things like that. Um, so we're, you know, you know, docs with Glocks uh, cases, you know, the one down in Florida. We were part of that. And so there, there's uh, a lot of stuff. And then we do a lot of educational stuff. Our website is full of educational material. You know, what do you do if your doctor asks you if you own a gun? And, you know, all those kind of things. You know, the, the, uh, unfortunately, the medical establishment is mostly anti-2A. And so, you know, like the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Medical Association, even uh, like the American Academy of, of Psychiatrists, you know, and, and one of our leadership is a psychiatrist, you know, and he's got to deal with that kind of stuff. You know, Robert Young, the guy who, who's the editor of our, of our website and all that kind of stuff, he's a psychiatrist. Um, we have a pediatrician who uses a pseudonym when she publishes stuff because she doesn't want to get outed to her uh, pediatric academy because she's concerned that they may take some kind of disciplinary action against her because they are so anti-gun. Yeah, let, let me ask you, because one of the things I've noticed is that a lot of the research uh, that's being done, the anti-gun research in places like UC Davis, uh, gun, the Gun Violence Prevention Center, uh, which is really a, just an anti-gun group uh, headed by an anti-gun activist. All right, Garen uh, Wintemute. Eric Garen, Garen Wintemute, yeah. But I noticed that a lot of people doing this research are medical doctors. Why do you think that is? Well, I, I think that, you know, the, over the last 20 to 30 years, the, they're becoming more and more indoctrin indoctrinated into the you know, gun violence, uh, you know, prevention thing. Well, let me tell you something. There's not a doctor in the world that can prevent somebody from, you know, robbing and shooting somebody. Okay? Not an unarmed doctor. No. <laughs> well, it's not just that. It's, 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 it's a social problem. It's a criminal justice problem. You know, people are buying a lot of guns now. Why is that? Well, maybe because they saw the riots happening and that the cops weren't doing anything and, and they let all the, the guys out of prison during COVID. What the heck was that all about? Why, why aren't we keeping them in prison? You know, they let them all out and then surprise crime goes up. And then, oh, yeah, let's not prosecute people. Let's not put them in jail. Let's not make them do cash bail because that would be. Um, racist or I, I don't know w what it would be but but you know the, the problem is is <clears throat> and all of a sudden crime goes up right 
Well, you think like s smart people might decide to arm themselves when they see the cops aren't doing anything and crime is going up and they're seeing people being victimized and you know, they're, they're looking at the city streets and they're going, this isn't safe anymore. Well, you know, it's interesting. What, we are not a public safety organization. Uh, we don't advocate for, pub, for public safety. Uh, what we do is we advocate for the right for one to be able to defend themselves, right? Right. And I mean, we are our own first responders. Exactly. You know, that's the thing. And by us being prepared and being capable to defend ourselves, what comes of that? Yeah, you get public safety. You get public safety from it. Right. That's exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and I was, we were just listening to Masada Yu, but he was talking about, you know, the that uh, armed citizens kill more bad guys than the 800,000 sworn police officers in this country. Wow. Think about that, you know? And, and, and when you talk to the criminals that are in jail, they're more afraid of the armed citizen than they are of the police officer, because the police officers know the rules. And armed citizens, all they have, the only rule they have is to be in fear of, of, of their life you know, against, uh, you know, bodily harm or serious bodily, you know, or death. But, but I think sometimes the other difference, though, is is that the armed citizen generally is not someone coming from somewhere else. The armed citizen is usually already there. Oh, right. Right. He's, yeah, he's when, the victim half the time. Too. Ex exactly. Well, he's trying to keep from being the victim. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. what's going on. Whereas law enforcement almost always has to come from somewhere uh, to right. in order to in order to interject. Right. And, and not only that, but the armed citizen is seeing the thing happening. He right. knows exactly who the bad guy is. Right. The cop has to show up and f try to sort out the good guy from the bad guy. They don't, they don't always know, and that's occasionally, you know, the good guy ends up, you know, paying the penalty, mm -hmm. um, you know, and like, don't pick up the guy's rifle when, after you shoot him, you know, okay? Because then you look like the bad guy, okay? Don't do that kind of stuff. You know, these are things that education will will teach you you got to get training you got to understand that but right. the, the bottom line is you know we are seeing an uptick in crime and there's also an uptick in firearms purchases and so the left will tell will say well look see crime is going up because there's more people with guns that's not the case the, the, the correlation does not equal causation right. there's a correlation because crime is going up and people are defending, want to defend themselves because they see what's going on with, you know, the um, the Soros elect, you know, Soros funded uh, DAs where they're not prosecuting, uh, you know, violent criminals or you know even some of the nonviolent things that lead to violent criminal behavior later on, you know. I mean, think about all the property crimes that are happening in places like San Francisco where you can. You can steal what nine hundred and ninety-five dollars worth of stuff without being prosecuted. Mm -hmm. What well, the heck and, is that all about? Well, it's crazy. Yeah, and you know, for for us, our primary focus is is that we see the crime, you see it going up, and yet at the same time, you're trying to prevent me from being able to exercise a not just a fundamental right, but also a constitutionally enumerated right. In fact, in many cases, you want to make it a crime. You yeah. want to lock me up. For that crime. No, it's that's that's insane. Yeah. You know, it's it's absolutely insane. Yeah. And, and the, the fortunate thing is that people are pretty smart when it comes to their own self preservation. And they look at this stuff and say, This doesn't make any sense at all. You know, and people are saying this is nonsense. Well, it, it, that's how you get that's how you get a district attorney in San Francisco who gets in, in of all places in San Francisco who winds up getting uh, removed from office right. via and, 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 and you know uh, even even people who live in a place like San Francisco realize this doesn't make any sense at right. all, and, and we got to do something about it. Well, and, and unfortunately, some of the other ones have not been kicked out yet. But you know, I mean, we, we see what's going on like in Los Angeles. Their sheriff is, is starting to you know say, look, this is getting to be ridiculous. You know, okay, I, I'm I arresting people, and you're not prosecuting them. Duh. Right. Well. How do folks uh, follow the work of uh, Doctors for Responsible Gun Ownership? Yeah, our website is drgo.us, and uh, we're also on Facebook and some of the other stuff. There's some interesting conversations. We post a lot of interesting articles. Uh, we write articles you know, and post them on our website twice a week. Um, we have outside and also you know, native, inert, you know, or, or uh, intrinsic uh, doctors uh, and other healthcare professionals writing stuff. Um, 
It's a good organization. We also have a matching service called twaydoc.com where we take two-way friendly doctors and match you, we match them with you. It's it's uh, there's no searchable database. It's we will just link you up if we have somebody. Mm -hmm. And all you healthcare providers out there, you need to go to twaydoc.com and sign up if you're a two-way friendly provider. We really need to have you know, it doesn't do any good if we have all this demand and no, nobody, no supply. So we need some supply side pe people too. So, excellent, sir. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Hey, it's my pleasure. Fun. I'm sure we will be having a good time a little bit later. Oh yeah, cigars and whiskey. It'll be a good night. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be a good and, time. and a bad morning. I'm sure. Right. Stay, instead of coffee with Craig, it'll be booze with Deleuze. <laughs> there you go. I like it. <laughs> all right. I'm thanks. there. Thanks, Dr. John. All right. All right, folks. Hey, that's uh, that's gonna be it for this interview. But we're gonna be back well, with more of the activists here at the Gun Rights Policy Conference 2022. See you again, soon. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.